Well, let, let me just thank you very much, Chair Fudge, for convening this hearing today, and thank you to the witnesses for your testimony. I know it's a little awkward to uh, to testify in this virtual environment, but uh, be assured it's also awkward for us as well. But we are making this work, and and hopefully we will have a a good hearing today. Uh, you know, our goal must be to guarantee the absolute absolute right of every voter to vote, whether they're Democrat, Republican, Independent, Libertarian, Green, Constitution. I think our charge is to make sure that every voter has the absolute right to vote. And so, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm just so disappointed that many of our Republican colleagues just cannot embrace a vote by mail idea or vote from home idea. I think it is absolutely necessary in this environment. Uh, I think that some of our colleagues may be trying to prevent a large turnout in November. I hope that is not the case. You know, I was looking at a poll this morning, a Gallup poll, which said that 64% of those poll uh, favor a vote by mail system. 64%, that's almost two out of three. 83% uh, Democrats, 68% of independents want it, 40% uh, of Republicans want it. And so I, I think we ought to begin to, to reconsider any opposition to vote by mail and to, to really consider how we can get it done. And so thank you to the witnesses for your testimony. Uh, the uh, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights is a, is a very uh, special organization to me. Uh, many years ago, when I was a young lawyer in my hometown, it was the Lawyers Committee. Uh, that came in and filed a lawsuit that challenged the city uh, for having 23 miles of unpaved streets in the African-American community. And those streets are now paved. And it was because of the Lawyers Committee. And so I always like to make reference to that when we have these hearings. Uh, also, there were virtually no African-American elected officials uh, in, in my community or in my congressional district. And it was NAACP Legal Defense Fund that came in and filed a voting rights lawsuit, and now we have dozens and dozens of elected officials in. So thank you to those two witnesses and to the other witnesses as well. To the uh, Secretary of State from Louisiana, uh, you made a statement a few moments ago that we cannot see uh, election authority to D.C. politician. Uh, I'm a D.C. politician. I am an elected official of 750,000 people, and, and I'd like to get more clarity about the, the meaning and, and the intent of, of that statement. Please, if you would help me. Yes, sir, Congressman, thank you for that question. Uh, in a previous testimony that I um, had with uh, Senators Klobuchar, Wyden, uh, and others with regards to this very issue, during a normal Louisiana election, less than 4% of all ballots are cast via absentee by mail balloting. And to surge our absentee ballots to 100% of paper is neither prudent nor, nor practical for us. If we were forced to do so, as Secretary Merrill was stating, we would go from a $6 million election cost to over $12.6 million, of which we have- 100% of the cost, Mr. Secretary. Suppose the federal government provided 100% of that cost. Uh, no, would sir, that be helpful? I, if it covered 100% of the cost? I don't yeah. know that it could ever co cover 100% of the cost. Well, that's our legislation, to provide 100% of the cost of the November election for every state in the country. And if you have well, some, some financial concerns, I think we need to set that aside because we propose to pay 100% of the cost. Let, let me go to the other secretary from Alabama. Sir, you... you um, in essence, said that the states need to run their own elections free from federal interference. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, those were code words back during the voting rights movement, uh, co code words for states' rights. And, and I push yes. back whenever I hear that. Is that your meaning? Do, do you feel oh, yes, sir. Okay. Do you let, feel, me... let me just finish. Do you feel yes, that, that the federal government has no right under any circumstances to get involved in state elections? Yes, sir, I agree with that. Unless you see that someone is violating the trust and the confidence of the process or that they are intentionally trying to reduce the participation efforts of any one individual or any group of individuals. That's not happening in our state. As a matter of fact, I've just shared empirical data with you to prove that it is not happening. And we want to continue to do what we're doing. We do well, believe that it is under state some right. circumstances, That's you are conceding that under some circumstances, the federal government would have some role in the state if voting rights were being denied or, or affected. 
Yes, sir, if, if that was necessary. But in the case, just like in the Shelby case, uh, the Supreme Court realized that that was not necessary at this time to continue that oversight. And that's the reason why they ruled the way they did. And that's the reason why we were able to change a voting site from a well, community you center to a five, you, do, Mr. Secretary, you do know that Section 5 in, in the case that came out of your state was not was not dismantled by the Supreme Court. Uh, what the Supreme Court did was to invite the Congress to update the formula that gives life to Section 5. And so yes. there is a role for the federal government. In Mr. Butterfield, yes. Mr. Mr. Butterfield, your time is up. Uh, but you. I will say that, yeah. Mr. Merrill, your interpretation of Shelby is not accurate. Uh, well,